You want to get into Tufts, but you don't have that much time. Well, you have arrived at the right destination because today I'm going to give you a time saver's guide to how to get into Tufts University as a first year applicant. Let's go. Tip number one, you definitely want to click on the link below this video to my classic article, how to get into the Ivy League ethically. The reason you want to click on that is because that article really lays the foundation for what you need to be doing in ninth grade and 10th grade and 11th grade in order to put yourself in a position where you're rounding third base and heading home summer before your senior year and into your senior year in a really prime position to slide into home plate and therefore get in to Tufts University. So that's going to be important reference reading in order to get you in the right position. Tip number two, Tufts, like many private schools, really does give benefit to students who apply early decision one or early decision two compared to those applicants who apply regular decision. In the current environment, when this video is being created, we are in a test optional environment. Uh, who knows what tomorrow will bring, but as long as Tufts remains test optional, uh, it is extremely important that you understand more students are going to continue to apply to Tufts than ever before in order to get, give it a try. Because even if their test scores are quite disastrous, they no longer have to submit those test scores. So in that current environment, they could still have you know inflated A grades like from their high school, like most students have these days, and potentially swing an acceptance into Tufts in their mind. So as a result... Lots of those students who are attempting that are attempting that regular decision. Because remember, if these students who would not normally be applying to Tufts are applying to Tufts, they probably can't get their act together early enough senior year anyway, uh, and they'll probably apply regular. So this huge flood of applicants has come into the regular cycle the last few years since test optional has become a thing. And as a result, you, if you are serious, really serious about getting into Tufts, regardless of what your test scores are and if you're submitting them, which we'll get to that point in a moment, um, we definitely think that it's a good idea for you to apply to Tufts early decision one or early decision two. It's binding though. So that means if you're going to get in ED one or ED two, you got to go. The reason why it is uh, advantageous to do it is let's look at the statistics. The st I'm doing it fast, so I'm stumbling over my words. The statistics say that the acceptance rate into Tufts is two to three, if not four times higher ED than regular. The acceptance rate, obviously more students are applying regular, but uh, just playing the odds, you have a much higher chance, you know, on average the schools that do this accept anywhere between two and three, sometimes as much as four times as many students ED out of the number who apply uh, than they do regular. So uh, it's not in terms of total numbers accepted is greater. It is in terms of playing the odds. Within the pool, you have a higher percentage chance of getting an ED than you do regular. So seriously consider early decision one or early decision two if you are applying to Tufts. Tip number three is don't do the minimum, do the maximum. What do I mean by this? Click on the link below this video to my How to Build an Extraordinary Extracurricular Resume short course because even though currently Tufts does not have a resume upload option to its supplement on the common application, you can still share an, uh, a, a, an unabridged, a longer version of your extracurricular exploits in the additional information section of the Common App's writing page with Tufts. Uh, much more space. You have 650 words there than you would have on the activities page alone. You're still going to fill out the activities page, but I really encourage you, as long as Tufts does not have a resume upload option on its supplement, uh, which who knows, maybe they'll add for the 2023-2024 admission cycle, but maybe they won't, take advantage of the additional information section on the Common App's writing page and put into that section a longer extracurricular resume uh, then you can fit anywhere on the activities page where you were quite, quite hemmed in by the uh, word count limits and character count limits in that page. So that way you can brag a little bit more about what it is you've accomplished. And if you take my extracurricular resume short course, which I just mentioned a moment ago, how to build an extraordinary extracurricular resume, you will learn how to elaborate on extracurricular achievements and accomplishments in a way that will be enticing and appetizing to the admissions officers at Tufts. Tip number four, make sure to watch my video 
about uh, which Common App prompts are best to use, which are not best to use, the most popular, the least popular. Actually, there are two separate videos. Those are also linked below this video. And tip number five, let's dig into the actual supplement now for Tufts. This video is being produced in July of 2023. So this video is absolutely relevant for the entire 2023-2024 admission cycle. However, I can't promise that the same supplemental essay questions will be asked in future cycles. They may be, they may not be. But if you're watching this anytime between July 2023 and early January 2024, I am now talking about the current uh, questions that exist on the Tufts supplement. So let's dig into them. Number one, Tufts cares about your sex life. I don't know why they care about your sex life, but they do. They ask you questions about things like your gender identity. Uh, so why am I bringing this up? Well, I do want you to be honest. Honesty is always the best policy. However, it is very clear by the way in which Tufts does self-report uh, out publicly the types of students they are accepting that Tufts is interested in diversity as it relates to gender, gender identity and pronoun usage. So as a result, I highly recommend that you consider reviewing your uh, desire to get into Tufts and comparing that to what uh, you would like to put in that section of the supplement to Tufts University because uh, your goal is to get into Tufts and they have no right to go actually into your bedroom and you are free to change your your view of yourself in a few years. So just keep that in mind if you are trying to differentiate your application to Tufts. Um, if they are so inquisitive about your private life, then you might as well play the game with them. They are also asking about pronouns. That is your choice as well. Uh, and they also ask about religious preference. Uh, you know, again, I generally believe that honesty is the best policy. However, you've come to this video because your goal is to get into Tufts. So just keep that all in mind. Those questions are not to be ignored as you were completing the Tufts supplement. I also should note that Tufts does allow students to be considered for a first year global program in either Peru or the Southwest of the United States, where they take a semester off campus to start their college experience. Definitely want to look into that if that in any way intrigues you, because that is a way that the, the university can bring in some more bodies and more money. And uh, if you're desperate to get into Tufts, you might want to consider if that is uh, or any of those programs are of interest to you. Uh, in addition, we should now dig into a little bit more the Tufts supplemental essay questions. Uh, it is extremely important that you understand that uh, they are going to be reading every word you write in their supplement. The Tufts supplement, whether you're applying to engineering or arts and science, offers you the following three questions to respond to only one of the following three in 200 to 250 words. The first question is, it's cool to love learning. What excites your intellectual curiosity? The second question is, how have the environments or experiences of your upbringing, your family, your home, neighborhood, or community shaped the person you are today? And the question three is, using a specific example or two, tell us about a way that you contributed to building a collaborative and or inclusive community. With all three of these questions, Tufts legally now is not supposed to give you any credit for being a certain race or not being a certain race. However, you are free to share if your background, your heritage, or your past life experiences, if they've intersected with race, have impacted you in such a powerful way as you may wanting to include them in one or one of the responses um, that you would pick to one of these questions. Again, you can only answer one of these questions. Do you need to mention your demographic background or race in your response to these questions? You absolutely do not. What's the most important thing that you could do in response to one of these questions is really be original and also write well. That's extremely important. Only the, the only 250 words you may be saying, I just got to share stuff. I don't have much space to really build out a nice structure and everything. No, that is wrong. You need to actually build out a one sentence thesis statement slash introduction, a several sentence, if not paragraph long, body and then a sentence or two long conclusion so that you have a well-structured little mini essay there in order to state your thoughts articulately and originally. So if you're going to respond to it's cool to love learning, what excites your intellectual curiosity, my strong recommendation would be to obviously share whatever that one or two things are. 
But then you need to dovetail into how you see yourself pursuing that intellectual curiosity in specific detail at Tufts. Okay, that way you're showing that you've really done your research and you're not only able to walk, but you're able to chew at the same time. You're going to say what you love learning about. You're going to introduce that in an introduction slash thesis statement. And then you're going to dovetail that with um, how you could excite that passion or pursue that love of learning specifically and that curiosity at Tufts. So you want to try to do a twofer in that essay um, so that by the conclusion, when you're stating one or two new ideas and not just restating the thesis, you've at least put the spotlight on you, but you've also put the spotlight on how you would interact with the resources and the intellectual life of Tufts. If you're responding to the second prompt, how have the environments or experiences of your upbringing, your family, home, neighborhood, or community shape the person you are today, that's the one that usually is really important to respond to if you feel as though something in your past has been so consequential, but you didn't mention it yet on the Common App Essay. Don't mention it again if you've already mentioned it on the Common App Essay. But if you have not yet mentioned the story on the Common App Essay, this is where you would want to bring a little short story about something that maybe you've had to overcome, an adversity, some way in which you were challenged, um, and learn from that challenge or really some experience, good or bad, that really shaped your perspective on life or your value system. If you feel that there's a very tailor-made essay or story there, you would want to respond to that one. But you would, again, want to structure it the same way I just said to structure the first one. Introduction, thesis uh, statement, sentence or two, body paragraph, specific supporting detail uh, uh, of the thesis statement that you shared in the intro, and then a concluding sentence or two, where you are wrapping everything up nicely and not just restating the thesis, but going a step beyond the thesis to leave the reader with one or two new ideas that make them really intrigued and excited about you and your candidacy. Again, if you're capable there of maybe name dropping Tufts or two in your response, that is okay. That is good, actually. Some students will not be able to tell a past tense story and, and then dovetail it as nicely uh, with why they're looking at Tufts as they could for the first prompt. But if you're a talented writer and if you're working with me one-on-one, -on -one, I would definitely try you try to get you to still refer to Tufts in a sentence or two in the body and how you feel as though uh, you arrive at Tufts uh, as a, a sort of an ultimate ending of the story that you share uh, and, and why you feel like Tufts is sort of the natural next step in your journey as a result of just sharing whatever this story, this environment, this experience, your upbringing story uh, sort of dovetails nicely with why you are applying to Tufts. And then finally, using a specific example or two, tell us about a way that you contributed to building a collaborative and a reclusive community. Again, if you choose this one out of the three, Structure it the same way, but tell a very specific story about how you were a net value added or positive to a community. And again, you have an opportunity there to throw in a sentence or two minimum about how you see yourself continuing to be able to positively impact a community and give specific details how you envision that occurring at Tufts. So again, it's not just a past tense essay. It's also try to paint a picture of how you would be able to continue to build a collaborative and or inclusive community at Tufts. If you're applying to the School of Museum or Fine Arts at Tufts, you're going to have another question instead of the three that I just mentioned, and you will still only have 250 words to respond. That question is, art has the power to disrupt our preconceptions, shape our public discourse, and imagine new ways of being in the world. What are the ideas you'd like to explore in your work? You should be honest, of course. Again, I always say honesty is the best policy, if at all possible. Um, however, this is also another opportunity to think about what does Tufts value in its applicants? What is its mission statement? What is its value system as an institution? And could you in any way ingratiate that type of content into the type of um, ideas that you truly do want to explore in your work and explain how you, exploring them specifically at Tufts um, would be extremely valuable, not just for you, but also for Tufts. But again, structure it in a similar manner as I just explained earlier with the previous questions that were only for the students applying for arts and sciences and engineering. And then finally, this year, Tufts has a question similar to the complete your own sentence questions of other colleges and universities. 
where in 100 words or less, they should have said 100 words or fewer, but 100 words or less, they say on their application, they want you to complete this sentence. I am applying to Tufts because. Now you may be saying, Craig, you just mentioned in your other essay uh, guidance that you should explain why you're applying to Tufts and why you think it's a good fit. And I, that's absolutely true. But now they're asking another question where they're asking the same thing. Well, you could have more than one reason why you're applying to Tufts. This is a 100 word response, this one, this final question. So this should be more um, off topic, if you will, from whatever you've mentioned more deeply in the essay earlier. Now you should be talking about other aspects or two of, or three of Tufts that really attract you to the school that you have not yet stated as why you're applying to Tufts in your, your earlier short essay. So don't say the same thing you said earlier. And again, you only have 100 words for this one, but you wanna complete this sentence and keep it in one sentence. Okay, don't start writing a full-fledged essay. They're asking you to complete this sentence in 100 words or fewer. Very few sentences are 100 words long, but theoretically you can really say a lot in a 100-word sentence. You, you're not going to be able to go deep with it, but you can share a diversity or, or multifaceted uh, response here as to what about Tufts beyond what you've already shared is really pulling you to that particular university. Uh, so all in, I pray for you. I hope that you get in. I hope this has been valuable for you. If you feel like you need and or you want more personalized guidance, my name is Craig Meister. I'm also referred to as the College Meister. You can go to my website, collegemeister.com, in order to learn more about me. And on my site, you can also learn to see if I have availability to work with you one-on-one -on -one as you navigate the college admissions process to Tufts or anywhere else. I edit essays, I review resumes, I give total application review and overall college list guidance and strategy support one-on-one -on -one to clients from around the world. Hopefully I still have space available when you see this video. And if you wanna work with me, again, go to collegemeister.com. Until next time, my name is Craig Meister and I hope you keep watching this channel because I will be doing more videos about how to, in a timely manner, quickly as possibly as I can, I know it's been almost 17 minutes, uh, give you the tips necessary to get into the colleges of your choice and help you reach, if not exceed, your true potential. See you soon.